morning, everyone. What a lovely day to have this wonderful conversation, which is all about uh, relationships, love, emotions, you know. Um, as we've seen, uh, this pandemic might have become a reality of our times, but it has not stopped us from forming new connections, looking out for emotional support or potential partners, you know. And in all of this, what has, who has been playing the Cupid here? Any guesses? Yes, the tech guys. The tech guys are the ones who are keeping us virtually engaged. Our dates and our giving of flowers and our coffee uh, with our movie watching with our beloved ones, all has moved to online, all has moved to virtual space. And it has become close to real. And thanks to those tech guys who are making and adding new features every time. What has also been happening is that in the last 90 days especially, uh, a lot of people, uh, since they are at home, they prefer to be at home, uh, though the lock, unlock, uh, unlock one is there, but they still uh, don't venture out, they prefer to be at home, and it has resulted in spike in traffic on online platforms like dating and matrimony sites. So these are some of the facts, and today we have a wonderful conversation that we're going to do, and the topic of the discussion is technology playing Cupid in times of COVID-19. So, I mean, no, nothing can stop the emotion of love and the, the need, the quest to find a partner. I think people go to any levels. I, I think tech is enabling it and it's playing a huge role. So I would like to welcome, uh, I have an esteemed panel in front of me, uh, virtually, of course. Uh, I would start with my first speaker, Mr. Chandrasekhar R, Chief Technology Operation and Infrastructure Officer, Bharat Matrimony. So welcome to this uh, conversation. Uh, I have with me Mr. Ravi Mittal, CEO Quack Quack. Uh, I have uh, uh, here Mr. Rohanish Kar, pre-sales leader, India Media, Akamai Technologies, and uh, our esteemed speaker, Mr. Ravi, uh, sorry, Mr. Ranjit Paul, Deputy General Manager, IT Manorama Online. Welcome all of you. All of you have a part to play in this stupid game. I mean, you all kind of um, are the enablers of it. So let me start with Mr. Uh, Mr. Seker. I want to start with you. My first question is, give me a sense of what the last 90 days have been like uh, you know, for, uh, for your uh, uh, platform. If you could give me a kind of a background to it. OK. Uh last 90 days what we see is immediately after one is internal um, another one is external from the customer point of view uh, what we see uh, is on the website side we see a 30 percent in increase in the number of registration uh, young professionals uh, who are currently working from home since they don't have to commute and they don't have they can't go out for shopping are for socializing, they spend more time. Uh, one is we see a 30% increase in the registration is what we see in the last 90 days. Right. Ravi, your thoughts, I mean, I have seen, you know, uh, uh, dating platforms curating uh, something like innovative stuff, like you can co co cook and, you know, co-watch, binge watch. What has mm -hmm. been it like for, the, for you? So the last 90 days have been a roller coaster for us as well. Um, in terms of uh, registrations, as uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar said, uh, we were adding about 10,000 users uh, pre-lockdown per day, uh, which has increased to about 18,000 users on a daily basis. Oh, daily basis. Uh, yeah. So what we are seeing, uh, again, that those numbers have fluctuated as the lockdown has opened up. I think people were going to their hometown or, you know, maybe looking for a job or something. So. Uh, as the lockdown uh, increased, we saw increase in registrations and the, as the unlock started, you know, we started seeing again a gradual drop in the people who are signing up. And certainly we have seen uh, a huge spike in the number of uh, chats which are happening on the platform. Almost a 60% spike um, in the daily chats. So we used to have about 300k chats a day, uh, which increased to about, you know, uh, 500k chats per day. So that's, that's what we have observed. Before I come to you, Rohanish, uh, I'll go to Ranjit. Uh, what what is what, uh, what has it been like for uh, for your platform, Ranjit? Yeah. First of all, good morning, everyone, and thanks to Exchange for Media and Akamai for inviting me to this panel. 
Uh, unlike uh, what we heard from Chandrasekhar and Ravi, what we have seen is a different story. In fact, uh, we are not seeing a significant increase uh, in the traffic uh, in the last 90 days. So there was an initial uh, drop in terms of uh, traffic just because people were actually probably getting used to the lockdown and getting settled down. Uh, but it actually came up and uh, it was back to the pre-COVID state. Uh, now. But what we have seen, an interesting factor is uh, there has been an increased engagement metrics in the last 90 days. That was the key factor because we have been analyzing the user journey throughout. And uh, when you say engagement metrics, uh, the number of contacts made, the number of messages uh, people have sent, the chat, um, uh, in the chat operations, the subscriptions, the conversions. So these are the engagement metrics we track normally. So that there we have seen a huge increase in the last 90 days. So that's what our observation is. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Uh, Mr. Kaur, to you, I mean, and uh, end of the day, I mean, somewhere uh, this, this unprecedented uh, spike uh, demands a quick adjustment, uh, both in terms of uh, manpower, I mean, uh, working from home, plus the tech part of it. Tell me, how are, uh, how, how, how are tech companies like yours, you know, helping them tide over this unprecedented hike, which they had not foreseen? I mean, thank you for that question, uh, Ruhel. So look, at least on Akamai as a delivery platform, uh, we've never honestly had the need to scale, you know, uh, beforehand or actually forecast what the growth's going to be. That's the beauty of the platform. We scale on demand, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and the amount of planning that actually goes into the deployments that we do for our platforms, the optimizations, uh, we're always six to 12 months ahead of that curve, right? So for us, honestly, uh, we were in good shape for us to be able to handle this traffic increase or this spike in traffic for a lot of the tech platforms that leverage Akamai today. Having said that, like I, I feel we've seen a steady increase in traffic across most verticals, uh, barring a few known ones. Obviously, travel and hospitality are down, but I still maintain that there's a steady increase, uh, unlike what, let's say, some of the other channels are reporting that they're talking about exponential increase in traffic across segments. We've not really seen that. We've definitely seen a steady increase in traffic though. Uh, but the other piece that we've also noticed and realized is the fact that while that increase in traffic has happened, uh, it's, it has not really resulted in increase in revenue for a lot of these tech platforms. Because if you think about it, because of COVID-19, uh, you know, ad, uh, ad spending was completely cut, right? Uh, companies stopped spending on advertising and a lot of platforms or companies that are dependent on ad revenues for their digital platforms obviously started to notice the squeeze, right? Uh, having said that, I mean, this is the time of opportunity. A lot of organizations and startups actually have used this period to uh, you know, pivot into more interesting models and focus on user engagement, like even Ranjit pointed out, to ensure that you know, they reduce their dependency on advertising and actually get more footfalls, get more first-time users signed up on their platform so that they reduce their dependency there and increase uh, you know, user engagement metrics. So that's right. the perception we have or what we've noticed in the last 90 days. Right. I want to go a little bit back and come to this entire online uh, matrimony and uh, dating you know, question. There was a little cultural barrier, if I am right, that's what I mean, I gathered from my research that, you know, especially in dating platforms, like matrimony is now accepted online, but there used to be a cultural barrier. Mr. Chandrasekhar, I want to come to you. Uh, people had this aversion to like, is it work, will it work? You know, should we make our profiles online? Has that cultural shift happened? Are we still witnessing uh, that, you know, mindset uh, in, in your space, uh, matrimony space, Mr. Chandrasekhar? Uh, the, ours, if you look at uh, Rakhil, is uh, our platform is built with the, our keeping our tradition in mind. Uh, for example, what we ask for is uh, like our platform, which can be used by the parents, like brothers, like you know the family, as well as the individual. Both of them can use the platform. Some other thing is what you look at is we ask for the horoscope, we ask for the stars, even we ask for uh, what do you call that kundli, like 
all kind of even the matching happens in our thing is we provide a feature whereby people can match the profile based on the horoscope right and is also uh, what we have seen over the years what we have seen is uh, people are uh, do uh, affinity to their community they belong to so what we have done is uh, in 2009 or so we launched 350 plus community websites like from agarwal to yadav we have community based sites today what we see is more and more traction to the community based website also what we see uh, yes so uh, over the period of time yes if you look at today if you overall if you look at parents and uh, family created profile is uh, somewhere around 30% still uh, when compared to the individuals of right. 70% right mr metal um, is this i mean dating is still i think you know uh, there are a lot of concerns here culturally as well you know uh, are you seeing any shift are we seeing any behavioral uh, customer shift uh? yeah uh, coming to uh, dating as such what we have seen over the years i mean uh, we started almost 10 years back and uh, we started with a desktop website and today it's it's all about mobile applications so uh, what we have seen is number one uh, more people are getting adapted to the concept of dating in india and uh, we are seeing that the average age of users is you know dropping uh, so earlier if uh, in a given year the average age of users was 29 or 30 today that has dropped to about 25 or 26 so the, the clear indication is that more youngsters are uh, trying out dating apps you know they're very curious about what happens how can they make new friends you know uh, how can they find a date and uh, a majority of our traffic comes from people who are in the age group of 18 to 20 so this is like a curious audience you know they are looking uh, to uh, figure out you know how dating works how online dating works so so this is an interesting uh, uh, you know data point which we have uh, more youngsters are trying out dating app this is what i would like to see right mr paul uh, what is your observation yeah what i feel is uh, there is a clear distinction in the people mindset uh, between a dating app and a matchmaking or a matrimonial app so what we have seen uh, uh, in our from our experience is that uh, our users prefer a more curated space uh, especially from uh, when it comes from a credible 132 year old organization uh, like ours like media house like ours and credibility or trust is a key factor from uh, our uh, audience point of view but uh, uh, and we are talking about serious users who would like to find a perfect match uh, in a short period of time whereas dating apps cater to uh, a more casual younger audience um, um, who wanted to um, or fun loving want to connect each other so they would encourage functionality like messaging chat video and those and those things whereas uh, in a matrimonial app these activities are usually metered uh, and closely monitored uh, in a matrimonial app so but uh, so in my opinion i think both dating and uh, matrimonial apps have a distinct space in the market Mr. Gar, it all comes again to tech. For example, why people are averse is one: is is it secure? Um, is it you know can it can it be trusted? For example, so a lot of it that cultural barrier is also to do with you know that trust factor. As a tech expert and a leader, tell me uh, what can be done. What is your advice to people who are in this space? How can how can you make it more secure for them to come online and you use it very? Well, that's a great question, and actually, that's a broad question. Uh, there are lots of aspects to security that you know we can sort of talk about here. And in the past, we've had a lot of those conversations with Ranjit and Chandrasekhar as well. Uh, if you think about it, like you broadly classify that into, um, if I could say, two main spaces. One, you know, you secure the entire user experience for the consumer. and second uh, it's all about protecting their information that's stored on these websites because unlike a banking application where you do have very sensitive information payment related information but on online uh, apps or uh, you know matrimonial apps or dating online dating apps there's a wealth of personal information that's being stored right, right. so i think Securing that information becomes very important. 
So protecting uh, customer identity is, I think, the single most important uh, uh, focus area for most of these websites. And I'm, I'm sure the gentlemen on the panel here will agree with me on that. Um, from, an, from an Akamai perspective, look, I think we, we, are doing, uh, we are doing a lot of work to help such tech platforms uh, you know, protect, um, secure, and govern uh, this data. And while doing that, also allow the organizations the capability to actually have fine-grained controls and fine-grained information at a user level so that they can provide a personalized experience to the end user. Right? So that's one part of it where you're protecting and you're securing the, uh, the user information. The other part is your more traditional cloud security conversation, right? So how do you ensure that you are, you know, your websites are optimized so you know, the performance is good and users uh, today don't have the patience to wait if a website takes a lot of time to load, right? So sure. while you're ensuring performance, you're also then ensuring that you know your websites are not prone to any sort of attacks from hackers or any attacks on credential stuffing because a lot, most of these websites work on logins. So you wouldn't really want that login to be compromised and somebody else use that login, right? Any sort of uh, breach of user information or user login credentials in today's world leads to a lot of brand damage, if nothing else, right? So there's a lot of work that Akamai is doing with respect to that, uh, you know, to ensure that your applications are also protected. And, you know, with respect to online dating and, and matrimonial websites, few use cases stand out, right? So um, how can Akamai help prevent uh, fake profiles from being created, or the fact that somebody else is actually crawling all the information and posting it on their websites, right? Um, and the other piece is how do you identify that someone who's using your platform is actually not a bot, but an actual human? These are some of the areas that Akma has been investing in heavily, and uh, we've actually built out solutions to protect or enable tech platforms from some of these use cases. I think dating a bot would be another level of dating now. We are preventing <laughs> from that from happening. Um, Mr. Chandrasekhar, uh, tell me in the last 90 days when uh, no weddings are happening, you know, and even if some are happening, I've seen a couple of them happening virtually, you know, taking place. Uh, what new features or, uh, you know, what are the kind of engagement uh, scenarios that you've created you know, uh, in the last 90 days for your users? Uh, Take us through that, you know, what, what new has been added in the 90 days? Yes, uh, Miguel. Uh, one, uh, one re in the last 90 days, what we have done is, uh, we launched recently launched the video call feature, whereby the families of the prospective bride and groom can talk to each other without revealing their number. That is the video call feature integrated with our app. Uh, that's one. And uh, this is from the matchmaking business. We also into the services business. Uh, in that, we launched a product called Home Weddings. Uh, what it allows is we allow uh, we help the customers to identify the partners who can uh, offer services at the doorstep, including Prohit, uh, like you know, who follow the standard protocol given by the government who follow. Uh, that's a uh, another product what we have launched in the 90 days. Uh, Right. Uh, Mr. Mittal, what has been the engagement like in the last 90 days? What new additions? So as I said, uh, the number of chats on our platform have increased uh, to a great extent. And each uh, chat length has increased. So, you know, naturally more people are uh, opting to uh, chat, you know, and uh, obviously not meet up uh, in person. Um, as a dating platform, we have been very apprehensive about launching any video call facility because we have seen that a lot of, uh, you know, scams happen on dating apps and it is which we uh, deal on a daily basis. Uh, we have a lot of people who try to create, uh, you know, uh, fake profiles and try to scam other people. So, you know, we are uh, currently in a stage where matrimony was probably 10 years back, you know, people are gullible on dating apps. So we try not to engage people uh, via video calls, but you know, let them chat. Uh, we opened a platform so that people can match with other users uh, all over India, not only in their area. 
so they get a chance to match with more people and interact and chat with more people uh, we also launched a feature called a random chat so instead of just uh, finding a profile and initiating a chat you randomly connect to people and they start chatting you know because you are at home and you don't have uh, much work mm-hmm. so this is a point of uh, you know contact where we could increase engagement for our users mr paul how do you make this engagement more sticky you know Yeah, yeah. In terms of activities we have been doing in the last uh, 90 days, uh, uh, in fact, our main uh, action item was empowering our team to give remote assistance because uh, suddenly people are all locked down and uh, there is no physical uh, service centers or help desk where people come and we actually handhold them to uh, create a profile, find the right match, and all. So that's all gone. So we have to empower our team to give remote assistance. So that was the primary activity we have been doing. Uh, on the technical uh, on the tech front i think we have been uh, uh, working even the pre covid times we have been working on containerizing the entire applications and uh, fully automating the deployment process and that has really helped in the last uh, in the during the covid period because uh, we, we did not need a war room setup kind of thing for new releases or product updates and enhancements everything can happen uh, uh, at home uh, from the respective uh, workstations at home Uh, in a distributed environment and it's fully automated and containerized so that was uh, one of the tech uh, um, uh, activity which we have successfully uh, found working during the last 90 days in terms of engagement uh, we have been working on an analytics platform a completely in house analytics platform called lens and um, we have uh, also a small recommendation engine uh, uh, based on ai uh, on intelligence uh, collecting behavioral statistics uh, from the users on what kind of searches what kind of profiles interest and all and based on that recommending the right kind of matches to them and uh, it has been found working perfectly well and we have been consistently continuously training the engine to make the match more perfect right mr car you know if uh, i mean the way the cases are rising and we don't see the socially you know the kind of world opening the way it was i think a lot is going to happen online itself you know uh one is that how do you create that close to real experience now because people don't just want to go on a dating site how they used to go before covid you know or a matrimony site i think they expect more now their expectations are growing because their offline world is also shifting to online from a tech point of view for use of ai and big data and all of those you know big tech terms tell me what all is possible how close can we get to reality and how how are you leading the way so sure. so rohel if you think about it uh akma as a platform is basically there to enable a lot of the experiences that you know companies like amphamary quack quack or bharat matrimony.com are designing for the end users right, right. uh mr chandrashekar actually brought out a brilliant use case about video and if you think about it uh, i think the video adoption on the matrimonial websites i feel is going to be key uh, is going to be key in the coming years uh you, we all know how you know audiences in india love to consume video and if you can make video as a use case uh you know to be a personal use case in something like a matrimonial website i think there is a lot of uh, potential there right and as a tech platform as a delivery platform for akmai uh, delivering video is a bread and butter right we we've been doing that for ott companies we've been doing that for publishing companies so for us we have a fairly robust and a mature platform when it comes to video delivery right so our entire focus would be ensuring that one that entire video interaction happens with the best possible quality with absolutely uh, you know no disruptions or no rebuffering because people hate rebuffering during a video conversation so our focus would be to provide you that quality of service especially to end users so that the entire experience becomes enjoyable having said that the other piece that we have sort of focusing on is to help automate workflows as much as possible right like how mr ranjit spoke about containerizing the entire infrastructure uh akma is actually focusing on automating your image and video workflows so that your teams don't have to actually focus on some of those mundane things and focus on more business driven use cases more revenue driven use cases so 
from an arc my perspective the entire focus would be for you guys to actually limit on any amount of manual work so if i could um, you know take an example uh currently if you think about it image workflows take a lot of time so you take a pristine image so you take an image of an end user and like ravi said since the users are now actually accessing all their information across the de different devices you need to ensure that the image that shows up on that particular device is in the right size and all of that depends on the size of the device right now one way to do that is to manually ensure that you have all the images in different sizes for each of this device and then use intelligence to ensure that you're sending the right image to the right device arcmai's point is how can i can do that free today you don't have to spend time one storing so many different you know uh, sizes of uh, storing different uh, images of different sizes and to also using intelligence at your end to define to you know devise which image to be sent to that particular device how can i can do that at the edge so you know that will ease up a lot of work at your end and uh, off late in the last 12 to 18 months we've actually extended that to videos itself so as long as you have a pristine video akma can use the entire same logic to extend that work for for videos as well so our focus one has always been scale and quality of service which is our bread and butter but in the last 12 to 18 months a lot more focus has been on helping tech platforms automate these workflows so that they can cut down on manual effort for some of these tasks and focus on more business tasks you know that will serve their organization better right i want to make a small announcement that we are taking questions we have started getting questions we are live on facebook uh, as well on other social media platforms uh, so you can send in uh, your question on this akamai eforum a special panel that we are discussing the role of tech in covid uh, mr chandrasekhar i want to uh, understand from you that uh, right now uh, we have the spike that we are witnessing unprecedented on online but uh, Uh, it will sustain to some extent and once it opens up it may be different you know while you are investing and preparing uh, how are you coming to terms with a long term strategy when the traffic kind of you know uh, becomes even you know uh, how would tech play a role in creating that engagement that you have you are trying to create right now okay uh, as uh, uh, run ranjit mentioned uh, what we are working on is uh, one is uh, investing on the uh, aml kind of initiative one is to bring in uh, improving the recommendation engine what we have so that it brings in more and more engagement among our members that's one uh, internally also what we are using ai is to bring in overall efficiency we are looking at by saying that Uh, to identify customers who are likely to uh, subscribe to our service uh, and is also we are using the uh, these kind of technologies uh, ai to identify the fake profile which uh, ro uh, mentioned rognish mentioned about identifying the fake profiles and right. is also uh, daily we get around 30000 profiles per day uh, going through them and identifying even duplicate uh, photographs duplicate profiles all those things like you know we use the technology to bring in efficiency right 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 mr mithil tell me uh, are there concerns that this traffic may not stay at 18000 that you are witnessing and how are you preparing for it how would you create that immersive tech and back end so as i said earlier i mean the traffic is uh, dwindling down to pre lockdown days uh, that is certainly going to happen uh the only point being you know how do you keep the users engaged uh, despite the lockdown you know opening up but still people are not uh, you know able to go out so you know you, you launch new features which keep them engaged and i think uh, with dating apps um, I, again as as security is very important uh, we use machine learning and ai to make sure that we weed out as many fake profiles as possible so as a dating app uh, the primary concern for us is to build trust among users and to make mm -hmm. sure you know they are not uh, engaging with any fake user or a, you know a spam user or a bot user so right. it's the main concern right now uh, you know to increase trust among users and certainly you know uh, we have seen that during the lockdown more uh, women have started to sign up so this is a, 
you know, promising sign for dating apps because uh, if, if I go back for the last three to four years, getting female users on board has been a challenge for dating apps. And uh, as more women start to use it, uh, you know, it, the onus is on us, how do we protect them more uh, so that we keep them engaged? You know, so this is from where, this is a starting point for us to, uh, you know, to get more users on board by word of mouth and, you know, where people share, you know, okay, dating apps work. Uh, this is where you can find new people. You can, you know, match and chat with them. So, so this right. is where we stand right now. Right. Mr. Paul, how are you looking at a post pandemic, you know, which we don't know the timeline, but how are you looking at you know, adjusting to that world as well as what the spike you've been witnessing now? Yeah. So digital adoption or empowerment, uh, I think will be much faster post COVID in the coming months. And um, we have built our technology stack, uh, considering all this in a completely scalable fashion. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's every, every different stack is horizontally scalable as well as vertically scalable. So the scalability factor is taken care, we can accommodate more traffic. Now it's going to be a focus on engagement. That's what the focus has to be in the, next, in the coming months. So right. what, what we have seen is uh, instead of just having a matchmaking platform um, to, to we might, we can, we are also thinking about a 360 degree solution uh, in terms of uh, uh, serving the requirements of the user uh, related to a marriage, like stage arrangements uh, and other things. So we are, we are already come out with a package uh, from our print uh, matrimonial division uh, on a 360 degree package to engage our audience, not only just for matchmaking, but to cater to their other needs uh, for arranging a marriage, uh, physical marriage also. So that's one. Second part uh, definitely uh, is um, uh, the users, the enlightening our users in terms of uh, data security and protection. So uh, or since we are actually working on a remote place and the traffic is going to be huge, there right. is always a significant uh, uh, concern uh, among the users on uh, the data privacy and security. So. So that's where actually we are uh, giving focus right now to enlighten the team, both the tech, product, uh, telemarketing, everyone uh, to uh, about the security, data security, and how they should manage data uh, in the process in the proper way. So that's something actually we are going to focus in the coming months. Right. Mr. Kaur, uh, what would be your uh, suggestion to these people, you know, these players to make a wholesome mix of uh, tech that goes beyond this period and also last, for example, when the world opens up and they have to deal with an offline side of it, the engagement continues, it does not discontinue. How do we make that seamless, uh, wholesome engagement possible? Sure, Royal. So I think I, I did bring it up um, in one of the initial questions. Uh, I think there has to be a lot more focus on uh, uh, protecting user identities and the overall security of your platform. Uh, if you've noticed, like in the last 90 days, the trends that we've seen is uh, cyber attacks have increased exponentially. Like obviously your hackers and your unscrupulous elements are taking this opportunity to exploit whatever uh, holes in the system that they can find. So uh, focusing on security rightly, like how Mr. Ranjit said, has to be the number one priority, right? Uh, and once you've sort of ensured that you have the right security posture in place, the other vital angle is also ensuring that you have a proper business continuity plan in place, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of organizations had to sort of move to it overnight because of the COVID-19 lockdown, ensuring that that continues to scale for you. Right, because I, I think initially how organizations adapted to that is to ensure that they uh, put all the critical applications on that, right? But now that has to scale and it has to be rolled out to a lot more applications so that from an employee perspective within that organization, you make it as seamless as possible for them to work remotely versus how they were working before, right? And one way to doing that is ensuring that access to these applications are you know, controlled better than how you were doing in the pre-COVID world. Like in the pre-COVID world, if you spoke to anyone from the IT team in terms of what was their uh, preferred way of ensuring that you, know, you were providing remote access, the answer would be VPN. But we've realized over a period of time that VPNs are not the most secure way of providing 
secure access to users to your applications. Akma has followed a zero trust uh, model for the last 12 to 18 months. Our entire organizations on that model. And that's a model that we've been talking to our customers about in terms of adopting. And there are multiple reasons for that. One of the main reasons is because you now actually uh, ensure that every user who's actually getting into your corporate network doesn't have access to all applications. You are only giving them access based on their role and based on whatever privileges the organization assigns. And while you do that, you ensure that you're also uh, you know, providing the right amount of performance for those applications. So the entire piece around enterprise solutions and how seamless you make it for uh, your employees is also going to be another focus area. So these are two key focus areas that I feel that most of the uh, organizations have to sort of uh, focus on. Uh, very, the third point, very specific to uh, just dating sites or matrimonial sites. Uh, ensuring how you keep bots away, right? Having the intelligence to be able to identify whether the user who's accessing your website is actually a human or a bot. Now, at Akamai, we've been able to actually build on that uh, technology for almost three years now. We've, we've been able to very effectively defend against bots, whether it's for crawling use cases or credential stuffing, which means someone's stolen your credentials and is accessing the website, or just, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 with respect to this fake profile creation, right? So focusing on that as well ensures that you're giving a very clean and a good end user experience. So that will, that will be my take on the third pillar in terms of focus areas in a post COVID-19 world. Brilliant. Thanks for explaining it that way. Um, Mr. Chandrasekhar, uh, uh, tell me if I had to ask you, uh, what have been the biggest takeaways in the last 90 days for you, both from um, an overall consumer behavior side as well as the tech part of it? What have been the key takeaways for you? Uh, one takeaway uh, is that we, uh, uh, as a company, never practiced work from home as, yeah. we, uh, as a policy. Yeah. And most of the work used to happen in office. Uh, now, post lockdown, now all 4,000 uh, associates are working from home. Uh, that's a major shift. Uh, in fact, uh, now we are thinking of uh, surrendering few of the office spaces what we are occupying currently and probably can you the work from home concept. Uh, it will overall associate point of view, they don't have to travel, especially like people in uh, like place in Mumbai. Right. They travel more than a couple of hours to reach our office. Now they can, with the kind of application what we have provided, they can work from home and service our customer. That is a big, uh, biggest takeaway. Uh, internal, as far as internal connection, that is one big uh, mindset change as far as the way we work. Uh, from the uh, customer point of view, what we are looking at, as I told you earlier, uh, come up with more such product like the video call uh, feature, what I mentioned earlier, uh, to look at more and more on the home weddings, more and more product we are working on. Third thing is what we are working on is, um, while working on the video uh, 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 feature, we are also working on the privacy of our, uh, privacy and the safety of our customers, what we are focusing. Like for example, uh, what we are thinking more and more is how to protect the women women in from our platform. Uh, basically, what we are saying is, uh, one, we have a feature by saying that, like, you know, uh, even though the data information, whatever they uh, put it in our site is uh, meant for sharing with the opposite member, uh, just to avoid, like, you know, abuse, uh, one, we provide a feature by saying that, like, you know, they can protect their phone number, they can protect their horoscope, they can uh, protect uh, who can see also. That is a new feature what we have uh, launched in the last 90 days by saying that any uh, female, uh, any women member can decide, like, you know, said by saying that who can view their profile itself, they can do. Now, even in the video call, now we launched one more feature by saying that who can contact through a video call. Only people who have interacted in the past only can initiate a video chat. We have more and more 
thinking from the customer safety and privacy point of view. Right. Mr. Mithil, uh, tell me about your learnings from the last 90 days, the key takeaways for you that's going to stay as part of your future policy as well. I think uh, what we realized is uh, there is a lot of more potential for dating in India. Um, right from the fact that we were able to you know, double our uh, daily user base uh, post-lockdown. Uh, the other learning is that uh, India is a price-sensitive country. And, uh, you know, as uh, the lockdown extended, uh, a lot of people lost their jobs. Uh, we uh, eventually saw an increase in traffic, but a drop in revenue, which was a very interesting, uh, you know, takeaway for us. Uh, it's, it's very interesting because, uh, you know, people don't want to spend money, though they want to engage on your platform, they are not ready to spend the money because uh, most of our users reside in tier two cities. And, uh, you know, price, uh, people are price sensitive uh, and, you know, the economy can affect even uh, apps like us, though people say that dating is a perennial game, uh, but that, that's the main takeaway for us. So, you know, we have to be prepared for all eventualities uh, going forward and make sure we uh, provide enough uh, easy accessibility options for users to continue engaging on uh, a dating app. And you said the traffic, a lot of chunk of it comes from tier two cities, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of almost 60% of our users come from prior to cities, um, even smaller towns as well. So, uh, I mean, that's, that had been before the lockdown also, but uh, after lockdown also. Uh, the, the main learning has been that, you know, the revenue, uh, what we expected uh, to see a jump uh, did not happen. Again, because of the prolonged lockdown, you know, probably a lot of people lost their jobs and they didn't want to spend money on uh, dating apps. Right. Mr. Paul, uh, tell me, uh, what are your uh, learnings from this 90 days and what would stay with you? The key takeaway, what I would say is uh, we should expect the unexpected. And uh, the last 90 days, tech has played a key role uh, in ensuring that the business goes on as usual. So business continuity is a key and COVID just reminds us of it. So as um, uh, Ravi was mentioning, we also have a significant audience uh, who are from remote and rural areas, not very digital savvy, not well connected, uh, people who need sort of hand holding and using a digital mass, uh, matchmaking app like ours. So this is going to change in the coming days. So, so, so digital, uh, so we, we should be prepared for uh, more people subscribing to it, keeping them engaged and giving them the right product and right services. So that would be the key focus. And that has uh, been uh, particularly reminded us uh, of, we were reminded of it because of the COVID. That's what we feel uh, uh, the takeaway from the last 90 days. Uh, Mr. Kar, from a tech point of view, uh, as an observer of uh, what's going around, tell me what, what do you think, what have been your observations in the last 90 days, especially what, what are the key learnings and takeaways you know, for, a, for the tech experts, for the tech leaders? I think one key transformation that we all noticed was the fact that I think a lot of organizations uh, had business continuity as as a as a item on their to do list, but it was never a priority, and that sort of changed overnight, right? And I think and that is going to be the uh, trend in the foreseeable future as well. Business continuity will become the primary driver for a lot of uh, organizations, right? Mm -hmm. And in the post COVID nineteen world, or the post COVID nineteen world is going to look very different from a you know, from what we are used to, right? So ensuring that uh, having the same amount of seamless experience while working remotely will be one key focus area. Arkham is already helping a lot of organizations in that space and will continue to innovate further to make that overall experience as seamless as possible. Uh, the other piece, and that's not just during COVID-19, we've always seen cloud security or security of your applications as another priority. And the COVID-19 period has only reinforced that because uh, you know your hackers are always one or two steps ahead of you. Uh, and they're always looking to exploit vulnerabilities in your entire infrastructure. So ensuring that you maintain the right security posture, whether it's having you know, your web application firewalls updated, or ensuring that you're not leaving uh, any ports open or unprotected. Your basic uh, security uh, hygiene has to be maintained. And 
on top of that there are partners like akmai or other cloud security partners that can reinforce that entire value prop when it comes to security and the final piece uh, will actually come down to how you manage your end users right we spoke about protecting end user identities we spoke about ensuring that you know there is no data breach but at the end of the day if you if you realize like even ravi spoke about the fact that even though they saw traffic increasing it didn't really lead to increase in revenue right because your end user right now is not probably willing to spend because of what has happened in covid 19 right. now you uh, all of these tech platforms have a ton of user data you know there are tr- trove of uh, user information now yeah. how do we harness that information to ensure that we are providing a personalized uh, experience we are curating that experience for the end user because unless you are able to drive user engagement right you, it's unlikely that your dependency on ad driven models for revenue will come down right? right so that focus on how do you harness the potential of the user information that you have providing like an omni channel experience across different platforms and then based on that being able to in, uh, you know integrate with marketing tech stacks or other tech stacks downstream to have or to leverage that entire consumer journey will become super important perfect thank you so much i'll take some audience questions we are getting a lot of audience questions so i'll start uh, the first one is for mr chandrasekhar and uh, mr kar so i'll start with mr chandrasekhar the question is from krishnan v uh, how safe is the video platform what are the points considered that some one does not misuse it uh, uh okay uh, thank you krishnan for asking that thanks uh, ragul uh, what we have done is uh, to protect the members interest uh, the members can receive call video call from only from the members from whom they interacted in the past so it ensured that that uh, whatever uh, uh, ravanesh mentioned also the identity gets established before the video call gets uh, allowed so right. that's a kind of protection what we have right right um, you would would you like to add something uh, mr kar yeah i mean look uh, like i said delivering video is a bread and butter right now if you're delivering video it's also your prerogative to ensure that you're securing the videos as well so akmai has done a ton of work uh, in that area you know in the last 24 to 30 months mm. uh, just extending to what mr chandrashekhar said right one way to just completely close that entire uh, experience would be to ensure that you're already able to identify the two people who are having the video conversation now akmai can also help uh, you know provide you capabilities where if you feel that one of the uh, users is not the right user who's on the video we've actually been able to provide apis that will allow you to actually take the, uh, you know just revoke access for that user and bring down that video right right so as long as you are able to identify if a user is valid uh, you will be able to revoke access and akmas are actually also been building uh, you know algorithms and the technology stack to identify whether an end user who's watching the stream or an end user who's interacting with the other person if they are legit or not if right. they're not legitimate we will provide you with the capability to actually bring down the stream so again we can go in depth in terms of how you are able to do that but that's just an extension of how you could secure the entire uh, video experience right um mr uh, paul for you the question is is uh, name is not given uh, from a user engagement point of view what's your take on gamification technique gamification thanks for the question uh, so we are not uh, uh, thought about that game, the, the gamification aspect uh, uh, in our matrimonial application uh, because uh, what i as i said before uh, we have seen that from our audience uh, behavior and audience uh, need base they mm-hmm. primarily prefer a very private curated space uh, from a company from a, a media house like us especially on the matter we have other um, uh, other applications and verticals where gamification was uh, definitely possible and we are doing it but when it comes to the matrimonial um, space we 
actually do um, uh, a complete curated space which is fully moderated and fully um, all the privacy concerns everything has been taken care just like healthcare and um, uh, financial data uh, this uh, matrimonial data is also very highly sensitive so we are actually getting to the requirements from the major audience from our primary audience in terms of uh, uh, making it a very curated and close space so that's what we are doing right now we are not thought about that right uh, for you mr mithil the question is uh, how did you manage the sudden spike in traffic because of covid did it impact performance yeah so i i don't think it really impacted us because uh, you know you have load balancers in place uh, coming to the technical side of it um, you know you have uh, load balancing which takes care of all the uh, stuff uh, since we have machine learning and ai in place uh, all the new uh, profiles which we get are automatically moderated 90% of them uh, you cannot be 100% accurate with that uh, we have a strong backend team which helps us moderate uh, the remaining set of profiles Uh, so you know we have got used to the scale earlier we have had hiccups uh, you know if you if i would have spoken to you 5 years down the line uh, but you know uh, now we are used to the scale so it it has not been a problem at all right and this is such a discussion that we are getting tons of questions so i have one more uh, uh, it again is for mr car and mr chandrasekhar uh, the video that you spoke about can that be recorded by the users there's one concern raised by uh, krishnan again has this question uh yes uh, rogel uh, uh to answer to this question like uh, as far as the end user is concerned when the video reaches the, the person's uh, device yes erc should be able to record mm -hmm. but since we are uh, giving the control to the end user from whom to get a video call Uh, we feel that it should be secure but uh, probably will uh, work with roganesh also and see like you know what else can be done to secure this kind of right uh, you want to add anything to it uh, mr car uh so like I, i think like i mentioned there are various ways to ensure that you're securing the the video uh, whether it's a live interaction or if it's an on demand file um and those are basically extensions to how we do that for a notity customer today right like a like a hotstar or z the files that they have users can stream it users can download it if they wanted to right but there are controls put in place to ensure that that doesn't happen right uh, so a lot of that could actually be extended to uh, the video use cases that you would see on an online online dating site or a matrimonial site right right uh, mr nimethil for you a uh, question from rk sena is there space for lgbtq community on your app if yes what has been the response uh, to be honest we haven't focused on uh, that aspect till now uh, to be very frank we haven't done it but of course there are uh, other apps which are dedicated to the lgbtq you know audience and uh, i'm sure they they cater much uh, better to uh, that audience uh, we haven't honestly got the time to uh, you know focus on that audience that's all i have to say here right uh, mr paul uh, and mr chandrasekhar this is for both of you how are, are you planning to enter new markets uh, how are you going to comply with gdpr and other regulations Yeah. outside in start yeah yeah i'll start on that uh, see uh, last year we have expanded we were primarily kerala focused uh, even right from 2008 and last year we decided uh, to expand to uh, four more states in south india in tamil nadu and andhra and karnataka so now um, uh, that, that that market is expanding and we are actually uh, getting good traction among those markets coming to the the gdpr and other laws i think that's one of the key aspect i think we should actually uh, be taking care in the coming months because uh, since most of the matrimonial and dating sites are globally accessible and not geo restricted uh, we are supposed to comply to the respective international laws and privacy laws at various parts of the world so we already have as you know gdpr which is uh, uh, um, uh, in the applicable to the eu citizens and the eu region there is also this california consumer privacy act and thailand personal protection bill which has come up recently 
mm. and which is also being taken uh, taken up seriously by uh, most of the internet uh, providers and our and the application providers. We also have the privacy uh, personal data protection bill from India, uh, so which is going to be uh, any time uh, coming soon. So this is these are some of the things actually the protection part. Uh, we should all the uh, uh, journey, all the all the um, uh, data journey, the journey of the data should be taken care of. We have collection of data, we have processing of data, we have analysis of data. Everything has to be. Um, compliant with all these privacy laws. So what we have done in our platforms is uh, we have developed in-house tools and platforms on all these stages of uh, data journey, right from collection to processing analysis is done through in-house tools and platforms, custom developed. We are not using any third party software to handle this sensitive and personally identifiable information. That was our key uh, uh, policy and, uh, and uh, plan to uh, take care of data, but definitely we need to uh, look into these finer aspects of all these privacy laws and take care of that in the long run. Right, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, I'll come with another question to you because uh, this user has specifically mentioned your name. How do you deal with fake profiles? As you have said, but I just want to reiterate it: uh, when fake profile is being created to scam others in terms of money, photo morphing, etc. Uh. Uh, what we have one, as I told you earlier, even when the profile, uh, like you know, thirty thousand profile, we scan through identify the fake profile. Uh, if it goes, to, if it gets identified, we suspend the profile. That's on the day one. And there's also subsequently also what we monitor the communication, what they do with the other members. That is, that is number two. What we do, and in case we find because all these people with the uh, intent of cheating others, they try to take the user away from our platform. We monitor uh, all such uh, activities. And is also we alert user in case we find anything uh, suspicious, we alert all members whom they contacted earlier by saying that to be a uh, little careful with uh, any kind of uh, thing what they do. Third thing is uh, what we do is uh, we have a, a especially to educate the users about uh, users about the kind of uh, activities what the, all these people fake people do we have a, a portal called safe matrimony that we educate the user uh, 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 in a regular basis these are the three things what we do right right um, mr mithil i want to come to you uh, uh, the the Question is, uh, what is the definition of a successful match for a dating app? I mean, I mean a lot of um, we measure success in terms of um, how many people have mutually matched on a daily basis and uh, how many people are chatting. So uh, we certainly have no control of uh, who meets offline and uh, what they do offline. Uh, right. For success is uh, how many matches happen on a daily basis and how many people are actually chatting. So the more uh, people chat and the more people are connected, that's a certain you know, success indicator for us. Right, right. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Paul and Mr. Chandrasekhar, and to all of you, to all three, quick one minute answer I need for this is, uh, how do we create a world-class uh, you know, uh, matrimony and uh, dating app that is based out of India? Do we see that happening anytime soon? Anyone? Yeah. Mr. Chandrasekhar, yes. Uh, yes, Rugal. Uh, like, uh, I think we do have necessary talent available in India. And uh, as far as uh, technology is concerned, AML adoption is concerned, we are at par with uh, most of the uh, uh, other advanced countries. Uh, with that AML, uh, with more adoption, we can build a world-class platform. Right. Quick words from you, Mr. Paul. Yeah, I think we already have uh, one of the very matured matrimonial uh, uh, platform uh, uh, across the globe. So uh, we are already uh, leading in that space, uh, especially when increased use of data analytics is the key because data definitely is the key because we need to slice and dice the data, getting get the right segments and micro target those segments. Right. and make conversions possible. And that's that's going to be the key. So we are right on target, right on, okay. right on the path. Mr. Mr. Mithar, quick words from you. 
Yeah. So as uh, Mr. Ranjit said, data is important. If 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 I'm I have to be a leader in India, I need to understand what users in India really want. And uh, if I have to fly fight global players like Tinder or you know Happen or any other app, uh, you know data is the key. And how we match users, how fast we match them, and how securely we match them, that is the key to you know uh, you know making uh, Quack Quack or any other dating app from India uh, to be the number one. Uh, right. You know customer focus is the key. Uh, to win Perfect. the game. Perfect. Mr. Kar, I want quick last words from you about uh, what can happen. What is your suggestion, your advice you know, to all of these players who are there uh, today? Uh, well, I, I think I'll, I'll just end by saying that I think um, all three of them spoke about the importance of data. Uh, and I think that's the most essential or the most critical element for them to become even more successful you know, than where they are today. Because all three of these platforms are the leading platforms in the country. And uh, for them to be even more successful, I think the right focus area is data. And the second part is around security. Security of your end user information, security of your own uh, infrastructure. And for you to be successful globally, uh, to ensure that you're complying with their privacy um, guidelines and frameworks, right? Now you could choose to either do that on your own Right? Or you could uh, work with third party uh, cloud providers or solutions like Akamai or somebody else to ensure that you're complying with those regulations. So those will be my two quick uh, pointers in terms of how can we get even better. Right. There's one last question quickly. I'll uh, put it to you, Mr. Mithil, that uh, uh, what are you doing to protect and secure user profiles so something um, like, like you know, Ashley Madison doesn't happen again? You know, that kind of a thing. Yeah, so uh, what happened to Ashley Madison is a simple data breach uh, where all the user email addresses and, you know, uh, their chat messages, everything got exposed. Uh, again, it's the same answer, you know, you, you do regular audits and you ensure that, you know, you have the right encryptions in place. Uh, you know, uh, you make sure that uh, there is no data leakage, you know, you keep the port, uh, all the ports, you know, the relevant ports closed, you keep auditing uh, from time to time. So, right. you know, that's how you keep your platform secure. And I, I want to ask Mr. Carr the same question. <laughs> yes. Your thoughts on this? So, um, with respect to the Ashley Madison piece, Ruhe, like Ravi said, it was a simple user data breach, right? Now, user data breach can happen in multiple different ways. It could be through, uh, you know, a social engineering attack wherein the hacker got access to the admin database, you know? Or it could just be the fact that they've exploited uh, a, a hole in, in your infrastructure through various application layer attacks that are very common today. Right now, the point is, like Ravi mentioned, ensuring that you tighten your security posture and also ensuring that you're not just looking at your infrastructure from outside, which means you're ensuring that your applications are protected, also ensuring that your own employees who are working or who have access to these remote applications, that entire access is also protected. So, like I said, uh, the world needs to move to a zero trust model where you're not allowing users access to anything and everything just because they're on VPN. Allowing them finer, ga uh, finer grain controls on what they have access to is also key to ensuring that breaches like these don't happen. And the third part is basically ensuring that what's going out of your corporate network is also being looked at because that's a key element that a lot of attacker, a lot of hackers in the past have exploited. There's a lot of work going on to ensure that you're plugging that hole as well. As long as you're looking into these three different aspects, I feel you are safe and you won't get into a situation that as that a site like Ashley Madison got into. Rohail, I would like to add a small, I mean, just to add to that, uh, in, in addition to all the secure tools and applications, it would be always advisable to have a dedicated team to monitor the traffic and find anomalies. That will, there's no replacement for that. Perfect. And uh, we are just out of time. Uh, I have to end it here. Thank you, Mr. Chandrasekhar, Mr. Carr, 
Mr. Paul and Mr. Mithil for joining us. It has been a great conversation, some key takeaways as well. And I, I know that uh, the lockdown is not the lockdown, but I mean, the social distance world is here and the people are pinning their hopes on the online platforms. And we hope you will continue serving them well, the way you are. And of course, powered by Mr. Carr and, and experts like him who, who provide these seamless solutions. Thank you everyone for joining us. It's been great talking to you. Thank 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 you everyone.